Welcome back, guys. Johnny Keck over at AMP Futures. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, just previously, we just shown you how to create a new chart. So now we're going to show you some of the menu options uh, within Format Instrument once you create the chart. All right, so what I'm going to do, I've, we've already created the June mini S&P contract here as a chart. I'm going to right-click on the chart, and I'm going to go to Format Instruments. All right, so you'll notice that we're right back to where we were when we created the chart. And what I want to do now is I want to go through each one of these tabs and just kind of explain the purposes of, of these tabs here. All right, so this is important to understand uh, what these tabs do and what they represent and how you use them uh, to create modifications to your chart. All right, so we've already covered what instrument does. All right, now we're going we're to go to settings. And now from the settings tab, I'm going to show you some of the parameters that we see here. So this is where you're going to be able to create the different resolutions, also known as intervals, for the chart type that you're going to use. Let's go over the different chart types first. All right, so if you notice here in this little drop-down menu where it shows chart type, you're going to see a pretty good list of different chart types that you can use. All right, so you have point and figure, and it's just a matter of just left-clicking that specific chart type to, to apply it. So if you notice, if I click point and figure, now I'm able to set the parameters for the point and figure chart. Uh, you know, resolution, box size, input values, uh, whether you want the break on session. All right, you can do CAGI charts, Rankle charts, Line break chart, Heike and Ashy, Volume delta, and Cumulative delta. And one thing I want to let you know as well is the delta charts or any type of market profile charting within multicharts.net, that it does take a little time to load that data. So when you create a volume delta chart or a cumulative delta chart or any TPO profile chart or any volume profile chart, just in that sense, it's going to take a little while. So it's not where you, when you apply it, it's not going to be an instant load. I would say give it a few minutes for it to, to backfill that data and then load onto your chart. All right, just because it doesn't load within the first three seconds doesn't necessarily mean that it doesn't work. Um, you, what you're looking for is you're looking for a little screen, a little message at the top of your chart. It's going to either say backfilling data, and I'll show you what that looks like in a moment. Uh, but let's go over the remaining chart types. So those are the different chart types that you can utilize. For now, we're just going to keep it on our regular chart. And if you notice also when you select each different chart type, the parameters are different for every chart type since every chart type behaves differently. All right, and then the resolution is where you're going to be able to enter the value of what the interval that you want for that chart type. So in this case, I have a one-minute chart. Now, if you hit this drop-down menu to the right of resolution, in this case, you have different interval types that you can use. So it's either going to use a tick chart, you can use a contract chart, also known as volume chart, point chart, also known as range chart, change, seconds, minutes, hourly, daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, and yearly. All right, so just be sure to select any of those specific chart types. You can control what interval you want here just by simply typing in the value. So I'll, I'll change this back to a, one, a minute chart. We'll do, let's say, a 15-minute chart because right now it's currently a one-minute chart, as you can see. All right, so I won't click OK just yet. I want to go through the remainder here. So chart settings, you have quote fields. So the, the trade, the last trade print that you see at 2097, if this quote field is set to trade, it's going to show the last trade price. If you set it to bid, it shows the bid price. And if you change it to ask, it will show the ask price. All right, it hasn't changed yet because I haven't clicked OK to apply it. But typically, most of the time when you're looking at a chart, most of the time, depending on what your trading preference is, you're usually going to have that on last trade price. So I'm going to keep that as is. Now, sessions, this is, this is pretty interesting. A lot of times we get customers asking, you know, I'm not interested in seeing the 24-hour Globex session. I only want to see cash market hours or I want, only want to see open outcry hours, which means basically during normal day trading hours during the day. All right, so if that's the case, what you're going to look for is you want to look for the category group of the market that you trade. So if you trade the mini S&P, for example, equity index futures would be the category group. If you trade currency, uh, currency futures, FX futures would be the category group. If you trade 30-year bonds or 10-year notes, interest rate futures would be a category group. So you can see that you have metals, you have energies. So you just want to make sure you look for the, the proper category group of the market that you trade. And then the language that you're looking for, if you want to be able to change the chart to normal day trading hours and not see the entire Globex session around the clock is open outcry. Open outcry just basically means pit market hours. All right, so 
if I only want to see right now, it's currently set to default. If you have it on default, that basically will plot chart data on your chart as long as the market is open. And Mini S&P basically trades 23 hours a day. So you're going to get around the clock data. All right, so about 23 hours a day. As you can see right now, I'm, I'm in, you know, we're approaching the final hours of, of the day here. So you can see that that's because my chart setting is set to default. Now, if I change this to equity futures, equity index futures open outcry, let me just go ahead and click OK real quick. And you can see the chart's a little scrunched up. But you can see now that it's only showing up until the close there. So I might have to stretch that chart out a bit. Um, I'll show you how to uh, change the scaling of the chart later in the video. But for now, I just want to show you that that particular setting in terms of sessions will allow you to choose what session you would like displayed on the chart. For myself, I, I like just leaving it on default, so I'm going to leave that as is. But you can go down the list and choose whichever setting you wish to use. All right, and you can have two options in terms of how you want your chart to build volume. Uh, let me just change the chart back so it looks a little more presentable. Okay, now you can build your chart based on trade volume or you can base it on tick count. So just choose either option. I'll leave it on trade volume for now. And then your data range. Data range is going to be how much historical data do you want to see on the chart. Uh, do you want to see two days back? Do you want to see... And then if you use the days back option, or you can use bars back, it'll always be based off the current present date. Now if you want to be specific, and you want to select from a specific calendar date to a specific calendar date, then just go ahead and select the from option there, and just go ahead and click the little drop down and just use the calendar to select which date you'd like to display data for. So that, that's one way of setting your data range if you want to have exact dates. All right. Then you have your time zone. By default, the charts are always set to exchange time zone. Uh, sometimes that confuses customers when they call in. They live in the East Coast or live in California like myself. Uh, you, perhaps you want to see that time zone to reflect your local PC time. If that's the case, just hit the drop down menu and change that to local. All right, if, you, if you leave it on exchange, it's going to show the exchange time of wherever that market trades, uh, where the exchange is located. So if it trades on CME, that's Chicago Mercantile Exchange, so that's going to be central time. If you trade NYMEX products like New York Mercantile Exchange, that will be eastern time. So just be mindful of that. If you decide to leave that setting on exchange, it's going to reflect the exchange time zone of wherever that market or exchange is located. All right, data number, that just basically shows you if you have multiple charts, uh, it'll give you a series of different data numbers that you can choose from. And then the subchart, which I'll get in a little more later in the series, that's more for if you have multiple charts within one chart. So like, for example, I can right-click on the chart. And right now, I just have a one-minute June Mini S&P contract. If I go to Insert Instrument, and let's say I add another contract in there. Let's see here. Let me, let me look for the Mini NASDAQ. And watch what happens. Now, if you notice, I have two charts or two symbols within one chart. Right-click, go back to Format Instrument. And now watch if I format it, this setting here, the subchart, I can move the subchart on the bottom of the chart from the mini NASDAQ up into the top. So watch, for example, if I move it to the top, you can see now that it flip-flops. You can see the chart now is, is at the very top in terms of mini NASDAQ versus on the bottom. So I can swap them back and forth. That's pretty much what that setting does. All right, let me go ahead and just re delete this chart for now and go back to a straight mini S&P chart. All right, and that's pretty much everything on the settings tab. And we'll go through these options fairly quickly since they are pretty straightforward. The style tab is going to allow you to choose what, what type of style you want in your chart. So whether you want to open high-low close bar, a high-low close bar, high-low bar, candlestick charts, traditional candlesticks, hollow candlesticks. So you can see as I'm left-clicking on, on the specific chart types, it's changing the chart itself. And invisible bars. Invisible bars will be useful if you're using TPO profile charts. You don't want the bars to cover the, uh, the TPO profile itself. So that's why invisible bar bars will be useful because you, you don't want it to overlap the, uh, the TPO profile chart, which means that it's, it's going to blend in. You're not going to be able to see uh, the point of distribution on those TPO charts. All right, so what we're going to do now is going to go back to candlestick. And if you notice, when you click on each chart type, it gives you the ability to change the colors and the width of how the chart's going to be displayed. So for example, if I click on candlestick, if I left click on the up candle, which is currently green, I can change that to orange. Uh, which I don't want it to be orange, but just as an example there. So all you have to do is left click in the color template. You'll see a little color template pop up. Choose the appropriate color that you like. If you don't like any of the default templates, you can always click on other, and you can use the spectrum to create your own custom color. For the most part, the default color templates are fine for myself. And then if you want to thicken up those, can those candles a bit, then you can go ahead and click on the right side there where it shows width. And you'll see this is an idea of how thick it would be. So if you want it really thick, you can go there. Now, that's a bit too thick for my liking. 
but I'll change it back. And then you can just go ahead and select whichever setting and preference is going to be best for yourself. All right. And then the scaling of the chart, what that allows you to do is sometimes if you look at the price column here on the right side, you can either compress or expand the price scale. So let's say, for example, if I go to user defined here, you can see the maximum price is 2106.33. So that's why you can see the top bar there, uh, the top margin of the chart is only going to about 2106. And if you look at the minimum, it's 2084. So maybe you want to give yourself, you know, more of a range. So you might want to increase those ranges out a bit. Like, for example, I can go to 2120. You see how that kind of changes the scaling of the chart and gives you more of a range? So that, that's what the, uh, the scaling is going to allow you to do. So you, you want to play around with the settings and just see what's going to look best for your, your chart. Sometimes what happens is when you have specific indicators or if you're using certain cumulative delta charts, uh, you might have to change the scaling up a bit so the, the scaling of the chart will look correct based on what, ty what chart type you have. So scaling will be kind of a tricky thing because it's going to depend on what type of chart type you're using. And if you're using different chart types or if you're utilizing market profile, um, you want to get into the scaling section and you want to mess around with the settings and just kind of play around and fine tune it so it, it looks the display will be correct uh, once you make those changes. And in terms of volume profile, we won't go into the volume profile in this particular segment because uh, that will be a different video altogether since there's a lot of information to cover. But, of course, you can still access volume profile from the format instrument window. You just got to make sure you check show volume profile and you'll see all the different volume profile charts that will be available. So you have tick count, total volume, sells versus buys, delta, buy versus sell volume. And uh, we'll go in uh, later in the video to show you, you know, some, what those chart types will look like. And again, if you use any type of volume profile tool within multicharts.net, uh, you got to give it some time to load that data because it does backfill and download a lot of historical data. So it does take some time. It's not something that's going to be populated within 5, 10 seconds. Uh, and you'll see that on the top of the chart when you activate it. It will say loading profile data or volume profile loading, and it'll also say backfilling on the top left corner of the chart. So it gives you an indication letting you know that something is still loading and it's not quite there yet, and that's why you don't have a chart. But in the meantime, this is a basic start just to show you what these tabs do and what they represent and how to go in there and make changes if you need to. And then we're going to move into the next segment. I'm going to go ahead and cover a couple other things on the chart. Uh, just by right-clicking on the chart, go over some of the menu options that we see, and then we'll go from there. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time.